Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. In this episode, we visit the Marine National Park in American Samoa with ecologist Tim Clark. We'll be doing some underwater surveying looking for outbreaks of the crown of thorn starfish. Crown of thorns is a predator that preys on coral, and individual crown of thorns can eat up to six square meters of living coral reef per year, and outbreaks are devastating reefs across the Pacific. Tim and his team are also mapping fish habitat in the park, and he'll talk about the tools and technology they use in their dives. Good morning. I have permission to come aboard. Permission to come aboard. We motored out of Pongo Pongo Bay on Tutuila and circled around to the northeastern side of the island to look for Crown of Thorns in the National Park of American Samoa. The park is one of over 400 in the U.S. and it preserves and protects coral reefs, tropical rainforests, and fruit bats. Of the park's 13,000 acres, over 4,000 are coral reefs and ocean. It is the only American national park south of the equator. Next, we meet Tim's team and get some background on the crown of thorn starfish. Okay, so tell me about the crew you got on board today, Captain Tim. We've got a great crew on board today, Nisa. Uh, we had Tasi here, he's going to be our boat driver. Tasi, say hi. <laughs> uh, is how long have you been working for the park now? Five years now. Five years. Um, Tossi started off with our terrestrial crew, also worked on trails, and now he's come over to the marine side. So it's great having him. Uh, he's in charge of our boating program. He maintains all of our boats and our gear, and is also our main boat driver. Uh, our other crew member here is Bert. Say hi, Bert. <laughs> Bert's been working for the park for the marine program for three years now. Going to four. Going to four <laughs> years. So almost four years. Uh, Bert's great. Uh, he really knows his fish and he really knows his coral. Uh, he's probably the best on island with fish and coral ID. Um, he's in charge of our inventorying and monitoring, our benthic surveys. So he does all of our coral IDs when we do our yearly benthic surveys. Um, so he's really a wealth of information. Uh, really knows his species well, and he'll be one of our main divers on this trip. Uh, Bert and I will be the divers, Tassi will be our boat driver. Um, Bert's going to be responsible for finding all the big fish and uh, identifying what they are. Before going out on the boat, I joined Tim at the National Park Service offices for a short lesson about crown of thorns, where Tim explained how his team is planning to eradicate them. We're having this problem on the island with crown of thorns starfish right now. Um, We've tried physically removing them mm -hmm. on the reef, but that takes a lot of time, and it's also slightly hazardous. You know, you have to have a diver go down, find a crown of thorn, pull it out of the reef, put it in a basket, take it to the surface, and then you have to get rid of it. Well, crown of thorns, it turns out, are highly poisonous. Uh -huh. I've had firsthand experience. <laughs> They're also very painful. So we wanted to try to reduce how much divers are interacting with the crown of thorns. So something that they're doing in Australia is they're actually using uh, a chemical called sodium bisulfate. It's a chemical used in pools to balance the pH of the pools. Uh -huh. And they're injecting it in the crown of thorn. So we just got in today while we were down at the warehouse, um, our box full of injectors. Uh, this is from a company that makes these for cattle. Uh, they use them to inject cows and livestock um, with various things. So we're going to be trying to modify these to use on the crown of thorns here. We're getting sodium bisulfate in, uh, and by using these, we can go down now, and instead of physically removing them, the diver just carries the sodium bisulfate and these injectors and injects them into the starfish, and that will kill the starfish. Um, studies have shown that it's toxic for the starfish, but it's fine for the other animals out on the reef. Because it's it's basically a salt, right? A, a sodium yeah, bisulfate. Yeah, sodium bisulfate. It's a salt. Um, it changes the pH. But, you know, in the starfish, you're injecting it into the starfish, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a, a big change for the starfish, but not really a big change for anything around it. So 
This is going to be our, our newest weapon in our arsenal to try to get rid of the, or at least to control this crown of thorn outbreak. And we're hoping uh, we're going to be able to get out there uh, pretty quickly because it's the spawning season for the crown of thorns. Oh, wow. And they can release about 10 million eggs each female during the spawning season. So we're trying to reduce the adult population so that in the future years, we're not getting an even bigger outbreak. Uh, we can connect them to a, a bladder system, which we can carry a chemical in. Uh, they also sent us a larger syringe. So we're going to be testing out these two different types of syringes. And they have a little extension tube that goes with them as well. So this extension tube, uh, you put a needle on, and this allows you to stay Pretty good far distance. away from that. Pretty far <laughs> away from crown of thorns <laughs> starfish. They don't move quickly and try to attack you, do they? No, they don't move all that quickly. Um, if a predator comes, like a triton's trumpet, you can see them, they'll get up and they'll move quickly for a crown of thorns starfish but that is a very, very slow walk for a person. <laughs> so um, we're fairly safe from them. Uh, and this is a, a container um, that we can use. We'll be able to fill this up with the sodium bisulfate solution, take it down with us, and uh, this should carry enough in it to, to kill about, uh, I think it's somewhere around 400 starfish. Oh, wow. So uh, it's going to allow us to go down there and, you know, hopefully really do some some work on these things. So why don't we go ahead and set one of these up. Wow, so this is going to be our new system for wow, hopefully controlling the crown of thorn starfish pretty here. Pretty vicious looking, Tim. It is pretty vicious looking, but they're vicious animals. Yeah. You know, they're really spiky animals. We don't want to get close to them. Um, so this is going to be nice because that's going to keep us a good distance away from the crown of thorn. Go ahead, stab the box. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> and then we would just inject our crown of thorn there with a little sodium bisulfate. And we're done. So nice. that's going to be really nice once we take this out. I'm looking forward to, to using this out on the reef. What will happen to the crown of thorns after it dies from the sodium bisulfate? Well, once it dies, it's just going to disintegrate on the reef. You know, other animals will come in and, and feed on it. So it's just going to, you know, be part of the marine ecosystem once again. <laughs> so it, and then the sodium bisulfate is just going to diffuse out into the ocean and it's going to be gone pretty quick. So you envision multiple crown of thorns sitting around sort of dead and decaying for a short period of time there? Yeah, that's what we're hoping for. <laughs> um, you know, it's probably predators on a reef come in pretty quickly. So once they die, they're probably going to be consumed within a couple of days. Coming up when Voice of the Sea returns, we go underwater to look for crown of thorns in the American Samoa National Park. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG's training routes go back over 40 years. Through professional development programs, curriculum workshops, research on teaching methodology, individualized school and district training, and so much more. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Welcome back to Voice of the Sea. Tim, we're right on the edge of the National Park now. Correct, we just got here. Um, we're at the end of the National Park, and today what we're doing is we're looking for crown of thorns is our primary objective. Um, these animals have 
uh, started showing up on our reefs in outbreak levels. So we're really concerned about them. Um, we want to find out where they are, and specifically if they're in the national park. If we're having an outbreak in the national park, we need to start doing removal efforts and get rid of them. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to drop down, uh, we're going to go down on scooters, and we're going to survey a section of the reef. Uh, we're also, our secondary objective is we're mapping out fish habitat. We're doing a study where we're putting transmitters in fish that's going to allow us to track them in the park. Um, so we're, we're concerned because we believe that, uh, well, our surveys have shown there's a lack of large fish in the park and our biomass isn't what it should be. So we're wanting to find out what's happening with the fish. So we're going to go out and um, try to find out where the big fish are uh, so we can go back with nets um, and catch them, put transmitters in them, and then track them in the park. What kind of habitat are you looking for specifically? Well, a couple of things. One is just structure. You know, fish really like structure. So we want to find a place that looks really good for fish structure-wise. But then also we're just looking for fish themselves. Oh. You know, so we're going to go down and look for some key fish, like some of the groupers, uh, some of the large target fish that the fishermen are going after, like the parrotfish, um, and also some of the threatened and endangered species that we have here. Uh, also some that, you know, have been concerned, you know, a lot of concern has been raised for, uh, like the humphead grass. Mm -hmm. um, Bumphead parrotfish is one, if we see it, we'd love to you know, but it's one that uh, we believe is fished out already. Oh, wow. uh, no one's seen it for um, over a decade now. So, uh, so we're going to do that, um, and what we're going to do, we're going to go, we're using nitrox as breathing gas. Uh, we're going to have 100% O2 as a deco mix. Uh, we're not really doing deco on it, but as a safety stop, uh -huh. we switched to 100% O2, which just flushes the nitrogen out of the system a lot quicker. So you'll hang that on a buoy, the, the deco? No, we actually carry it with us. Uh, okay. So we have a small bottle, a little 40 cubic foot bottle, um, and we sling it on the side of our, our BCD. Um, we have a harness with wings, so we just clip that onto our harness. And so we always have it with us. So if we have to stop the dive early, we can come up and we have the gas we need. You don't need to be in a specific location then to be able to no, use it? No, we're free of the boat, free of anything. Every diver has their own setup um, that they're totally self-sufficient with. Uh, but to do this, we're also going to be towing a GPS with us. So we're going to take the scooters down. Scooters are going to jet us along on the bottom so we can cover a lot more area than we would just kicking with ourselves on our fins. Um, but we also need to know where we're going. So we're going to be towing behind us a, a float, uh, one of the lifeguard floats, torpedo buoy, and on it we're going to have a GPS. And that GPS is set on track mode. So every 15 seconds it logs where we are on the reef. You don't need to press a button or anything, it does it automatically. It's all done automatically. So as we tow, tow it through the water behind us, 15 second intervals, it's taking our location. When we find an area with a lot of crown of thorns or we find a fish we're interested in, we'll stop um, and we have underwater data sheets that we can record what time we've seen that crown of thorn or that fish. Because you won't be able to touch the GPS, it's up at the surface. Correct. So we need to know, the GPS is going to be recording the time and location throughout our dive, uh -huh. but we need to be able to sync that up with where we are underwater, when we are. And about how deep are you going today? Our survey is probably going to be around 60, 50 to 60 feet. Um, that's going to give us a, a good depth range that we can see, because we can also look below us uh, to probably about 100, 120 feet. Uh -huh. um, and we can also look above us a little bit as well. So visibility here is, you know, 100 foot. Um, plus, so we have really good visibility in American Samoa. Uh, so by keeping it 60 feet, um, you know, on air you have about 60 minutes at 60 feet. Our nitrox mix is going to give us even longer. So it'll be a good safe depth with good visibility uh, both up and down to, to have a good survey. So say you're going along and you see a really nice habitat that is at 100 feet and it's deeper than you but you can see it. How do you record that on your map? Well, with the nitrox mix we're breathing, we can go to 98 feet. So if it's at 100 feet, we'll go down towards it. We won't go to 100, we'll go to a maximum of 98. But we'll take our float, pull it over I to that see. site, and then record the time, so then we can, again, link up with that GPS. So you're not just gonna swim 
um, completely straight at 60 feet, you'll detour when you find um, things of significance. Correct. Our main survey, our transect, if you will, will be at 60 feet. But then when we see things off transect that we're interested in, we can then go over there, mark that spot. Um, and that's important for us to, you know, we don't want to just get things at this 60 foot interval. There's big fish that are deeper, big fish that are shallower. There might be a big patch of crown of thorns deeper somewhere. Right. So, you know, the 60 foot transect is just a good depth to run at uh, to conserve our, our time underwater. So we don't want to go too long. We don't have want to have decompression issues. Um, so it's a good depth for that. But it also gives us a good visibility to see other things that we can then go over to. So anything we're interested in, We'll go over and then check that out. Actually, I, I thought that was a pretty neat dive. <laughs> yeah, it actually went really well. So far, we've seen no crown of thorns in the National Park, which we're really excited about. We have seen a lot of them outbreak levels on the south side of the island. Uh -huh. So now that we've done surveys in the park and shown they're not here, we're going to really switch our efforts over to trying to control the ones outside the park. So uh, in the next few weeks, we're going to be going out and trying to kill a lot of those crown of thorns, especially before the spawning season comes. Uh, we want to get them out of the population so they're not having a big reproductive input into the next population of crown of thorns so we don't have problems in the future. But the other thing, we saw some really nice fish on this dive. We saw three uh, humphead wrasses, uh -huh. which are one of the fish we're really concerned about. They've been highly hunted um, in the Pacific. They're really sought after for their lips. The, the, really? Yeah, the lips are It's kind of interesting. They, they are sold in the oriental markets, uh, China out of Hong Kong a lot, and they use the lips for uh, some soups, some sushis, uh, just a variety of things, but they're, they're highly sought after uh, for oh. the, the meat in the lips. The lips are pretty large then. They're very large um, and just very fleshy. So uh, that's been a big problem for the humphead wrasses uh, and also the live aquarium reef trade where they're taking live, live fish out of the ocean and then putting them in aquariums in restaurants and then you go and pick your fish. So these have been really sought after for that as well. So we saw three of them on this dive, uh -huh. which was really good. Um, so we're going to come back and try to catch those, put transmitters in them. Uh, we also saw a number of groupers that are very interesting for us. Um, really interested in the groupers because a lot of times they have uh, mass aggregations for spawning. Uh -huh. So this is important to us because if we have spawning sites for these animals nearby, we want to make sure we protect those spawning sites. So we're going to be tracking some of those fish and try over the next year or two to identify where they're going to spawn on the island and then work on trying to get those areas protected. And when you say you're going to track the fish, that means you're going to um, actually put a monitor inside the fish and follow where it goes? Correct. So this dive was just to find out where the fish are. Now we're going to be able to come back and catch those fish. Uh, we can do some, some minor surgery on them and then put a little transmitter inside their peritoneal cavity, inside their, their belly area, and uh -huh. sew them up, let them go, and then follow them. That transmitter uh, emits a ping, a sound that we can pick up on a hydrophone underwater. And then when we hear that sound, we can follow them in our boat or we also have listing stations up and down the coast that log any time that fish goes by. So it's going to be a great way to track the fish, find out what it's doing both you know, over the next year, and then also what it's doing just on a daily basis. Where does it go in the morning, in the evening? Um, where is it feeding? Where does it have rest areas? And most importantly, where does it go to spawn? 
Very successful dive, uh, both for the crown of thorns and for our, our fish study. And this survey that I just watched you do is one of the last ones in, in your series of trying to map the park? Yes, we've been doing these surveys for the last couple of weeks where we take the scooters out and we've uh -huh. been going down the park. And we've been trying to cover the entire coastline of the park. It's about 15 kilometers long. So now we finally finished that. So this was our last dive that we're going to be doing in surveys of the park. Um, so yeah, we've successfully completed our surveys. It's been a lot of underwater time. Congratulations. You know? Yeah, 15 kilometers <laughs> mm -hmm. of park underwater. It's uh, quite a feat, but it's been possible because of the technology we have, especially the scooters allowing us to go at a good clip underwater mm -hmm. and also being able to use nitrox and uh, being able to stay down longer underwater than we would otherwise. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. Welcome back to Voice of the Sea. Tim, your job just seems like one of those positions people dream about. I mean, you get to work here in American Samoa. It's, it's beautiful. Dive from the boat, survey the park. You know, this is, uh, for me, the dream job. I mean, I never really thought about working for National Park Service. I never thought they had marine ecology positions. Um, so when I got done with my PhD, one of my professors in my committee suggested I apply for this job. He knew about it. Uh, he had done some work here and so I applied and uh, it's turned out really well. Um, National Park Service is very supportive and uh, you know we come out and do research in the park. The Park Service is concerned about the natural resources here and wants to protect them which is really what I'm interested in as well. So it's been a really good match but for me it's something that I've always been interested in. You know, I've always really enjoyed the marine marine life underwater uh, and above water. And so during school, that's kind of what I strived for, um, both in my undergrad and then going for a grad, graduate degree. So this is sort of accumulation of years of study and also a bit of luck, uh, you know, just finding this position and finding a place that I really like. Probably not for everyone. It is isolated a little bit in the middle of the Pacific. It's living in a different culture, which, you know, for me, I find fascinating. Uh, the people in American Samoa are, are wonderful. They're friendly. Uh, they're some of the nicest people that I've ever met. But there are cultural differences that you have to get used to. So it's a, it's a great learning experience, I think, and sharing with a different culture. Um, obviously, not everyone's going to enjoy that. But for me, it's, it's been really nice. Thanks for watching Voice of the Sea. University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program. Helping coastal communities of Hawaii and the Pacific. Through research, education, and outreach. Serving the community, from elementary to graduate students. Hawaii Sea Grant. Turn your love of the ocean into a lifelong career. Join NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as we unlock the secrets in the deep oceans, track rapidly moving storms, model climate trends, protect and preserve our marine resources, and so much more. It's all in a day's work at NOAA. Find a career that makes a world of difference, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship. NOAA. Kosi Island Earth is working to establish new avenues for connecting research scientists with educators and communities. Kosi Island Earth is working to enhance the science and ocean literacy of our island residents and visitors. Kosi Island Earth is working to connect scientific research, traditional knowledge, and ocean policy. Kosi Island Earth, bringing together university, government, research, and community partners to enhance ocean literacy and engage all ocean users in stewardship.